In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new lesson in Mobius. New lessons are created using the lesson editor, which is accessed from the content repository. To open the lesson editor, I can click current class from my sources pane, go into my units, select a unit, and then from here, go to the create new menu at the bottom and click lesson. Alternatively, at the top of the content repository, I can click create new, select lesson, and select the unit that I want to create my new lesson within. In this situation, I will create a new lesson within Introduction to Statistics. This is the lesson editor. The first thing you'll do with your new lesson is rename it from new lesson. So I'm going to call this definitions. Here we go. I'm going to jump over to a different class quickly just to show you what a lesson looks like when it's already built and ready to deploy to your students. So here I am in a different class, Calculus for Sciences, with a pre-built lesson that's ready to deploy to students. You'll notice in the navigation pane all of the content that's contained within this lesson. Lessons consist of something called content blocks, which are organized into pages and sections. Content blocks can be things like questions, text, interactive narratives, math apps, and question groups. Pages are what actually hold your content blocks, and sections group your pages under headings that you define. For example, lesson part one and lesson part two, these are both pages, whereas quiz is a section. One thing to note when organizing your content blocks within your pages is that you can decide to display your content blocks as their individual pages. In this situation, as you'll see, each page just contains one content block. So lesson part one only contains this content block. Lesson part two only contains this content block. If I had more than one content block within this page, I can then set a property to this page to say, by going to the properties dropdown, display blocks as separate pages. So within this one page, all of the content blocks within that page will therefore display as their own pages. I know that that change takes effect because the text of the content block changed from italics to plain text. I'll now return to our previous class to show you how to create pages and sections within your lesson. Here we are, back in our Statistics for Beginners class, working in our new lesson called Definitions. Currently, I just have one empty page. And on this empty page, I can choose to add content blocks. Again, those content blocks can be creating a new question or text, creating a new interactive narrative, creating a new math app, maybe an ungraded one, creating a new question group, or I can import existing content from my content repository. So I can use these options here, or from the page arrow, I can click here, and again, I have these same options available. I can also choose to add additional pages. So when I click to add page, I then have the option to custom name my page. As well, I can add a section where I can custom name my section. I'll just leave it as section for now. And as well, I can also click and drag to reorganize the pages and sections within my navigation pane on the left. If I have a section selected, I can then use this new page shortcut to insert a new page into the section. So let's go to actually add some content blocks to our lesson. So I'm going to start with this first page. And if I were to click new question or text, I'm then taken to the question editor, which should look familiar to you if you have authored previous questions within the content repository. Here's your question editor. I'm going to cancel that. If I were to choose to author an interactive narrative, I'm then taken to the interactive narrative editor. And again, I'll cancel that. I can then choose to create a new math app, which is created from the math app editor. And lastly, I can create a new question group. So from here, a question group is inserted into the page. From here, I can either author new questions or import content into my new question group. All of these content editors have instructions available in the online help. So be sure to check out those help topics and videos when you get a chance. I've gone ahead and renamed my section and two pages to be appropriate for this new lesson. So I'll show you how to import existing content. I'm going to go to the page arrow and I'm going to go to import and I'm going to stay in my current class and I'm going to go to my all content types folder and I'm going to click text and I have some pre-existing content that has been authored in my content repository. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to bring them into my lesson by clicking import. And here they are. 
And as I've mentioned before, you can reorganize these content blocks by clicking and dragging within your navigation pane. And I'm going to add an actual question to this lesson just so that my students can check their understanding. Again, I'll click import and my lesson is contained within this page. Once you're happy with the content within your lesson, you can click to preview your content and you can see how it appears to your students when they're actually completing your lesson. So again, if you're happy with how it looks, you can move on to defining the properties for your lesson by clicking the properties tab. So in the properties tab, you can define a short name for your lesson if you'd like, because sometimes space is limited and the full name of your lesson, if you have a longer lesson name, can't be displayed. So you may want to define a shorter name. You can also define a description of the lesson. And then down here, you can then define all of the lesson properties uh, that, will, uh, that will impact how your students complete this lesson. Be sure to check out the Define Lesson Properties help topic and video guide to understand the uh, details of these settings. Once you're happy with your lesson, you can then click Save to continue working on it or click Save and Close to return to the content repository. You'll receive any warnings for um, things that, for example, if you're missing content, my introduction section is empty, um, but that's okay. I'm going to save anyways, and maybe I'll return later to fill in that section at a later time. I'm going to click Save anyway. And now my lesson is now housed in the Introduction to Statistics unit. And here you can view the content and pages that I have created for this lesson. And that's how you create a new lesson in Mobius. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this video to be helpful. Want to see what else you can do in Mobius? Be sure to check out the links to the Mobius Online Help in the video description, as well as our other Mobius video guides. Subscribe to the Digital Ed channel to be the first to know when a new video comes out. And don't forget to hit that like button.